morning all of you today we are going to discuss natural gas transportation in oil and gas industry so as you all know that once the gas is being produced it gets separated it comes to the gas processing plant gathering system and then it has to be sent to different locations as you also know that this natural gas has come to the forefront due to increasing demand in many countries headed by united states china and india as soon as the uh, utilization of gas has been increased its demand has increased as a result the transport of natural gas over long distance has become very very important and therefore a gas transportation has to be discussed in a great detail now there are two well established technologies which are existing today and they are used to transport the natural gas from sources to consumption market now here you see that the pipeline accounts for 70% of the transported gas and this pipeline overland are very cost effective technology as far as different other technologies are concerned but for a shorter distance we'll see this now uh, underwater pipeline cost around 10 times that of on on land pipelines of same length however they are also uh, useful and effective as compared to other method for a shorter distance now you see that there are other technologies also which you use to transport natural gas from one place to another is by liquefied natural gas we'll discuss in detail in coming slides now this accounts for almost 30% of the total natural gas supply throughout the world and this technology is very proven and safe method of transporting natural gas from one place to another also you notice that a number of lng terminals and ships are available worldwide and already a huge amount of investment has been made in this direction and therefore uh, this technology is very important for transporting natural gas from one place to another there is one more technology which is called cng and it's environmentally more attractive than lng for sea transport of relatively smaller amount of gas over shorter distance right however the cng cannot replace lng because already the infrastructure in in case of lng has been made and for longer distance uh, applications longer distance travel this lng are more cost effective than the cng so the replacement of lng uh, should not be taken place directly by cng there are other methods also like gas to liquid transformation and uh, uh, gas hydrates we'll discuss further in the coming slides now as you can see here that the stranded gas which is being produced has to be transported by various means from one place to another so the pipeline cng lng uh, gas hydrate can be transported in the solid form also uh, in hydrates but this technology is being in, in under study and therefore uh, we will not discuss this in much detail also uh, it can be transported in form of liquid and sometimes in the place itself where the gas is being produced the gas being transported uh, to the power station nearby and therefore it is uh, uh, used for producing electricity in that place and being transferred to the place of utilization so in this way there are the various methods which are being used and each method you can see using this chart that is pipeline transportation which is more effective as compared to other method for shorter distance so in this graph you can see we have gas delivery on the y axis and distance to consuming market in kilometers on the x axis now here you can see that if the volume is very large to be transported and if the distance is around 2000 or less in that case the pipeline method of transportation is very useful so i repeat again if the gas delivery or volume of delivery is huge very large so you are somewhere here and if distance is around 2000 kilometers then pipeline method of transportation is quite useful similarly you see that 
again the distance is around uh, 2000 and your uh, gas delivery or volume to be transported is also not much then both pipeline and CNG methods are useful right so for longer distance uh, less than 2000 and lesser volume delivery the CNG is good and for huge volume to be transported for shorter distance less than 2000 kilometers pipelines are most utilized however you can see that in this diagram again that for higher distance transportation LNG and GTL are found to be more useful so this pipeline and CNG cannot replace LNG anyhow for longer distance transportation because this carry along with higher energy in the form of liquid and it being transported from one place to another also the infrastructure has been created in LNG therefore these two methods cannot replace LNG GTL process is very uh, costly process at the source however if large volume uh, sorry if uh, large distance need to be transported then this gas to liquid are more effective so this chart tells a lot about usefulness of different transportation method from one place to another based on gas delivery to be transported and the distance to be transported now in this figure you can see that on the right side there is a table which shows that the technology and volume reduction which are uh, taking place when different means of transportation is being used so if you say pipeline transportation we have 70 to 100 percent volume reduction sometimes in cng we have 250 to 300 volume reduction in lng we have almost 600 times of volume reductions as per the original uh, volume and for hydrate we have a volume reduction of 150 to 200 right so you can see that lng why uh, it is useful for longer distance transportation because a lot of energy goes into changing it from gas to liquid and therefore once it is being changed we have lot of concentrated energy and it can be easily transported from one place to another now all these methods are in place but the important that we want to discuss is the pipeline method now this pipeline method as i said for huge volume to be transported for a shorter distance from 0 to 2000 kilometers this pipeline are very efficient way of transporting natural gas on land and according to EIA 2008 I am specifically discussed the case of United States where you see that there are there were about 210 natural gas pipeline system in the United States spanning over 3 lakh miles of interstate and intrastate transmission pipelines now this intrastate pipelines are typically these trunk lines with larger diameter of 20 to 40 inch so this trunk line transport major amount of natural gas from one place to another and uh, in transporting you know that there are a lot of pressure losses which in taking place from one place to another therefore to maintain the pressure almost 1400 compressor stations are required so you can see that the uh, infrastructure that goes into transporting the natural gas from one place to another now here in this figure you can see that the gas is coming from gas processing plant the gas is coming from gathering system and from various import all this is going into the major trunk line which is shown here so this trunk line is of larger diameter and responsible for carrying long distance travel of natural gas from the supply source to the distribution market to the customer now as you can see that this is always a demand and supply game that is whatever the demand is on the right hand side need to be supplied here but sometimes the demand and supply are not maintained therefore in that case uh, whatever excess gas which is coming should be stored in identified underground natural gas storage right so you can see that uh, in case of excess supply it can be stored in underground storage and also the excess gas can be sent to LNG picking facility where it can be changed into liquefied uh, natural gas 
and uh, further it is distributed once the demand arises so typically the demand arises during winter right so you have to heat the system you have a huge heating requirement and in that case it is a peak where the demand is high and in winters the demand has to be met and uh, if there is a reduction in supply then the underground, uh, underground storage that you have stored and LNG peaking facility where you have uh, converted the natural gas into LNG should be utilized in the time of crisis or in the time of peak right so this is the importance of pipeline transportation and you see that if you want to design the pipeline then you have to design its appropriate size to carry the gas from one place to another and also you have to fix the compressor station at appropriate distance so that whenever there is a pressure losses you can boost it accordingly also you see that the adequate compressor size uh, all this comes under the pipeline design and will lead to optimum operations of pipeline transportation now it is pipeline throughput which depends on the pipeline diameter so throughput means the whatever the gas which is being flown through inside of this pipeline is the pipeline throughput that is q depend on the pipeline diameter and operating pressure so we see that using bernoulli's equation we find that the pipeline diameter uh, has a relation with the Q we'll see in uh, further slides taking into account the length of pipeline at terrains right so this pipeline throughput depends on diameter and also the length of pipeline and the terrain through which the pipeline is going from one place to another place now typically this onshore pipeline operating pressure is about 700 to 1100 psi in some, some cases it may go up to 4000 psi and uh, if you compare it with offshore pipeline the operating pressure is typically lying between 1400 to 2100 psi depending on the material and the age of the pipeline so this is about pipelines and pipeline sizes in the industry now we comes to design part where you see that there is a bernoulli's equation on the left hand side which shows you the pressure energy the kinetic energy and pressure loss uh, due to friction Right, so this all summation will become zero and you see that once you solve this Bernoulli's equation you have a relationship which is given by uh, this P1 square minus P2 square equal to 4.195 to 10 power minus 6 gamma G Z and T are averaged out uh, throughout the length of the pipeline and this Q is the throughput that I have discussed and D is the diameter of the pipe now this term is carrying this friction factor that is the pressure losses throughout the length of the pipeline right and then you have another this pressure term now we'll see that this friction factor can be calculated by an empirical relationship which is shown on the top now uh, let us take one example of pipeline distribution of natural gas where we see that uh, gas is being gathered at point a from the gas processing plant b and c so b and c are connected to a and uh, this ad is a major trunk line right so the gas is coming from here at the rate of 80 million standard cubic feet per day and from c the gas is coming at 50 million standard cubic feet per day right so in this way the gas is incoming to the pipeline and uh, the most important question which is being asked here that what is the inlet pressure in the ad pipeline so the outlet pressure is known right so outlet pressure is 500 psi inlet pressure is asked we have to find out the inlet pressure so the conditions are the distance between ba ca and ad that is ba ca and ad are 1000 feet then you have a distance of 800 feet from c to a and this is the major trunk line which is ad and the distance from a to d is 10 miles right now the diameter of the pipeline ca and ad are 
so CA the diameter is 5 inch AD the diameter is 10 inch the pressure at destination D has to be 500 psi so the requirement of pressure at the end of consumer is 500 psi now the average temperature of the process of transportation is 77 Fahrenheit the pipeline roughness is given 0 0.001 now all gas is methane which is being transported the question being asked here that what is the inlet pressure in the AD pipeline so AD you have to find out the inlet pressure second question being asked is that if the gas from the pipeline BA if the gas from the pipeline BA is injected into the main pipeline AD so this BA is responsible for injecting the gas to AD the main stream main pipeline and the question being asked here that if the inlet pressure at B is 1240 psi what should be the diameter of PA right so diameter of BA need to be calculated now for this we must know the pressure here at this cross section so the pressure at A need to be known to find out the diameter of this pipe so first the outlet pressure we have to determine in this case so we'll see that how we'll determine and let's see the third question the third question is that if the diameter of the pipe CA is 5 inch now this is inverse question now you have the diameter of 5 inch uh, at CA at AB the diameter has been asked now at CA the diameter is given the pressure at C is 1000 psi so here the pressure is 1000 psi now the question being asked is that what is the outlet pressure at CA to get CA stream injected to main stream AD so we want to inject some gas from here to main stream AD so what is the pressure at outlet of CA to be determined and if it is less than what is required at this section so how much pressure has to be boosted by a compressor that is being asked right so these are the question before us and we have to solve it and this is a very interesting problem which is encountered in all kind of pipeline scenarios so that is why I took this question now here you see that at the cross section A the total rate of gas which is being injected or for transportation is 130 standard cube feet per day for pipeline AD now we have to randomly assume that let's take the null number of 1 into 10 power 7 right so this is our first approximation that we are taking now with pipe relative roughness of 0.001 the friction factor can be calculated by the above equation so this is the equation at the top which allows us to calculate the friction factor by randomly assuming the Reynolds number as 1 into 10 power 7 and the roughness which is given as 0 0.001 right so here the friction factor that we obtained is 0 0.0049 next we have to go ahead yeah this friction factor can also be calculated using this friction fanning chart so either way either you can use this equation or you can use this chart let's go ahead to discuss this first part of the question where it is being asked what is the inlet pressure in the AD pipeline so this is the pipeline AD and the question being asked that what is the pressure at A right so let's go ahead with this now to calculate the inlet pressure of the pipeline AD the Z factor is needed right so you see that we have equation here and we have to find out this P1 now getting this P1 we have to find out Z now this Z is dependent on the pressure at inlet and outlet because this compressibility factor is the average compressibility factor. So first we have to take some value of P1 to find out Z first and then what we have to do that we have to assume the inlet pressure suppose 
we taken 1000 psi now this p1 is now 1000 psi since all the gas is methane and this gamma g is given you see that it is 0 0.56 now the average pressure at which we have to find z is calculated by inlet pressure that is being assumed which is 1000 and 500 psi at the exit which is 500 so the average pressure is 1000 plus 500 divided by 2 which is equal to 750 psi now at this 750 psi we have to find out the value of z so the pressure is 750 psi temperature is 77 so at this pressure we have to find out different quantities right so at this pressure we have to see what is the pseudo critical pressure and pseudo critical temperature and then accordingly from the compressibility chart we can find out the z now z is found to be 0 0.9 now this is our first iteration that we have done after finding this z which is the average value of z we have to go back to this equation shown here and we have to put the value of pressure here and we have to see whether the right hand side is balanced with left hand side now if it is not we have to take another value of pressure so that we can come closer and closer to left hand side and right hand side so this is the kind of regressive analysis where you have to two variables which is pressure and z which are interdependent and then we have to do some iteration to find out the exact value of pressure so that this left hand side and right hand side get balanced so with number of iteration it has been found that pressure at a where the left hand side balances the right hand side is 1200 psi right so at 1200 psi we got left hand side of the equation balanced with right hand side now here we have to again verify that whatever Reynolds number we took for our calculation is right or wrong so what we have to do is that we have to calculate the viscosity at this pressure so the pressure is here uh, 1200 psi and the pressure at outlet is 500 psi so the average value of pressure is 850 psi now this 850 psi and 77 Fahrenheit the viscosity can be calculated from viscosity chart or other empirical relationships that we have discussed in previous classes where you see that the viscosity is found to be 0.0126 centipoise now here using this equation which is shown here for Reynolds number we can use this equation which is 20.09 gamma g q upon d and u so all these value are known only viscosity that we have just calculated from various chart which is 0 0.01266 we put this value and we found that this Reynolds number is coming to be 1.16 into 10 power 7 which is closer to the value of Reynolds number that we have assumed right so therefore the pressure at a is found to be 1200 psi now next is to find out the second problem right so the second problem is that if the gas from the pipeline ba is injected into the main pipeline ad so we are injecting the gas from b to pipeline ad major trunk line so ba is injecting the gas to the major trunk line now we have to find out the diameter and the pressure here is 1240 psi so the pressure at b is 1240 psi we have just calculated that pressure at a is 1200 psi now in that case we have to determine what could be the diameter of this pipe which is being used so that the inlet pressure is 1240 psi and the outlet pressure is 200 psi so again what we have to do is that we have to use again the same equation we have to put the value of pressures here right so let's go here now you see that pressure at inlet is 240 psi pressure at outlet is 1200 psi q that is the flow rate coming from b is 80 psi and uh, this length is 100 feet so now we have to put all these parameters in this equation and we see that uh, the average compressibility factor which is z coming out to be 0.85 viscosity 
uh, at that value of average pressure is 0 0.0134 Reynolds number is 1.1 in 10 power 7 and friction factor coefficient of is 0 0.0049 in that case diameter is calculated using this equation and it's found to be 6 inches right now the next question which is being asked is that if the gas being injected is 50 million standard cube feet per day at C and it is being discharged at A right so that uh, it goes to the major trunk line. Now the question being asked here, what could be the pressure at A once you have a pipeline connecting from C to A is of diameter 5 inch and length 800 feet, right. So in this case again, we have to find out the uh, pressure here uh, at this point. So now what we can do? is that diameter is given we have to calculate this p2 right p1 is known here so what is p1 p1 is 1000 psi right so we have the pressure here at uh, equal to 1000 psi now we have to find out the pressure here right and if it is less than the required pressure which is 1200 psi at a then whether we need the compressor or not this is the question being asked so let's see uh, we have to put all the parameter again in this equation where you see that the p1 is now 1000 psi we have to calculate p2 right now this diameter is known we can find out the average compressibility as we have done in first case and it is being found that the pressure is coming to be 960 psi now this 960 psi is the pressure at A once you send a definite amount of flow rate from C which is 50 million standard cubic feet through 5 inch pipeline and 800 feet length uh, pipeline. The pressure is coming to be 960 which is not exactly matching with the pressure at A which is 1200 psi. So 1200 psi pressure is required at A to pump the definite amount of gas which is coming from B and C to the source location which is D and the pressure required at D is 500 psi. Therefore what you have to do is that you have to install a compressor to pressurize this gas steam to 1200 psi so that the pressure at A will become 1200 psi and we could meet the demand at D. So in this way the sizing of pipeline is done in design and these calculations are very useful. It should be worth noting here that the fanning factor in all three cases we have used is 0.0049. So uh, one thing should also be noted that in all three cases the Reynolds number is different. However, the friction factor is same. Now this is because of high turbulent flow. Reynolds number is large number. You see in all three cases the Reynolds number is a power of 10 power 6, 10 power 7. So 1 by Reynolds number that is 1 by NRE become very small and therefore this friction factor will become function of only pipeline roughness. So in that case we see that uh, there is not much effect of Reynolds number on friction factor. Now this is the question which I have given you from Economite's book where you see that uh, this is an example of 5-2. Now you should do this example for finding out the number of compressors which is being required for pumping a definite amount of gas and compressor discharge is 2000 psi and that pressure that you have to maintain at the outlet of the pipeline is 1000 psi. So this is the question for your assignment. There is another way of transporting the gas that we have discussed, uh, the CNG transportation. CNG is natural gas compressed at pressure of 2000 to 3000 psi. And sometimes it is chilled to minus 40 degree centigrade so that uh, the volume of the CNG can be reduced. So it is a combination of higher pressure and slightly lower temperature to reduce the volume of the uh, natural gas. Now here you see that the gas which is being compressed is still a gas not a liquid. 
This is a proven technology in many application including transport by ship, truck and barges. CNG can be transported via road and sea and can be easily used by reducing its pressure. However, for large quantity over a long distance CNG is considered not to be economical. We can see again this by this figure that we have discussed previously that the CNG that it is not economical for transporting with a distance larger than 2000. So, it is not economical. LNG is other mode of transportation briefly we have discussed earlier. Now, this method requires the gas to be cooled down to a temperature of minus 161 degree centigrade. Right? It is not 161, it is minus 161 degree centigrade and minus 256 Fahrenheit which is equivalent at the atmospheric pressure till it condenses to clear colorless and odorless liquid which is known as LNG. This liquefaction reduces the volume to 600 times and make it very economic for large volume transportation over a very long distance. Right. Now, this natural gas must be purified to contain only methane and ethane before it is super cooled to form LNG. So, other component must be removed otherwise it will require more energy for doing the same process. Now, this LNG will be converted back to the gas in the receiving facility known as regasification terminal. So, there are two terminal here, one where the gas is coming from offshore field or field where it is received by the gas receival terminal and the liquefaction is being done and the gas being stored in the form of liquid in a special tank. Once this process is over, this is connected to the ship or barge and it being transported to the receiving terminal where there is again a terminal where the regasification is being done. So, at the one terminal liquefaction is being done and, and the other terminal the regasification is done. So, this particular uh, way of transporting the natural gas require huge infrastructure and uh, although the techniques technique is established and in place and therefore infrastructure is created it's also very good for long distance transportation economical than the other methods like pipeline and cng right so let's go to some other method of transportation which is gas to liquid transformation and uh, and not to confuse with LNG because it is a physical process and one is a chemical process where the natural gas being reformed and transformed into upgraded product like diesel, naphtha and different other products, kerosene. Right Now, this LNG is a physical as I said physical reaction to convert natural gas, uh, it is a transformation from gas to liquid. Now, in GTL is a chemical reaction to convert natural gas to different other complex valuable compounds, right. Now, this GTL process is much more complex and costly. A chemical process to convert natural gas into synthetic liquid, it can be crude oil, it can be diesel oil, it can be fuel, aviation fuel or gasoline. Process which is being used to transform the natural gas to the upgraded product is called Fischer drop process. You can google it, you can read detail about Fischer drop process and it is originally invented by, uh, by a German chemist in 1920 Franz Fischer and uh, the reaction which is taking place during the formation of different valuable products is highly exothermic produces lot of heat which can be used to generate steam and power and can be used in cogeneration plants right. So, um, uh, this typically the conversion ratio if I talk about the conversion ratio is about 1000 if you take 1000 cubic feet of raw gas and convert it, it can be converted to one barrel of liquid product. So, this is how the transformation is being done and once it is transformed into liquid. So, initial process very costly and uh, once it is being used for transportation from one place over a larger distance then this process become economical. Next method which is very useful for certain cases where you do not have the pipelines and different infrastructure. So, you, this is commonly used in certain cases. Now, this GDW is known as gas to wire transmission or uh, transportation. Uh, 
so this gas to wire transportation is the conversion of gas into electricity in a location close to gas field and transfer the electric power to consumer via transmission and distribution lines now this gas is being used as a fuel for gas turbine for driving the generator and in large scale the waste heat from gas turbine can be used to convert water into steam and turn steam turbine connected to other or same power generator right so the primary cycle where you are generating the power and the heat which is being dissipated can be utilized in a other power plant which is a cogeneration plant right so the overall system is known as a combined gas cycle turbine power plant where initially you generated the power and then again you have generated the power from the steam uh, from the heat that is coming out from the gas turbine and you are using the same heat to convert water to steam and then generate the power from that right the technical commercial evaluation must be carefully conducted whether building power plant close to gas field is economical or not now the gas to wire or transfer of gas to power plant close to consumers sometimes very useful now here you can see that in this figure that there is a gas based uh, location where uh, it is being processed and sent to power plant generating the electricity and sent to the final market and whatever the co2 being generated can be reinjected into the formation from where the gas is coming so in this way things are working in gas to wire transmission now so this methane hydrate transportation or this is a idea where this methane hydrate can be utilized to transport the natural gas from one place to another so sometimes this is also referred to as calatherate hydrates where we can transport different form of gases like we can transport also we can think of transporting methane we can th think of transporting propane butane and higher uh, compounds also of hydrocarbon so here you see that these natural gas hydrate are the crystalline solid bodies formed through hydrogen bondings of water molecules in which the gas molecules are being encapsulated inside the water cavities and generally these gas molecules are methane ethane propane carbon dioxide as i discussed so this technology is under development and can be utilized in future for transporting the natural gas as you can see in the right figure that it looks like a solid ice and it's very stable at uh, low temperatures so we can form the hydrate and we can uh, use it for transportation from one place to another right and also the dissociation is not very erupting it dissociates very slowly right so uh, uh, this is very safe technology and uh, but the problem with this technology is that require a lot of water for the formation and uh, transporting water is again a difficult task from one place to another right and it stores around 160 to 100 meter cube of methane gas in 1 meter cube of ice so you can see the huge amount of gas can be encapsulated in a small quantity 1 meter cube of water so this is the tendency of storage this is the ideal uh, condition of storage but if you talk about the real storage conditions in the lab it will take around uh, 60 to 80 meter cube of methane gas Therefore, this technology is under development and will, will come up in a big way in coming future, right? However, the infrastructure for generating the uh, such system of forming methane hydrate gas and transporting is yet to be developed and this is under progress, right? So, this is how uh, this technology can be utilized in future. Now, the last topic that I want to discuss is the gas sale agreement where you see that once you talk about the gas transportation we have to generate huge infrastructure right and therefore we have to generate huge investment in the gas production facility and this long-term sales agreement must be established between the buyer and seller once you go to the field development project now typically this agreement is signed for a period of 15 to 25 years and uh, the calculation of the gas price is very important factor because it depends on the complexity of field gas delivery volumes sales period and seller economic criteria also the buyer capability also the local law and regulations so it's not only one factor which determine the gas price but there are a lot of factors so all things must be in place uh, before itself 
so that a generation of huge investment will not incur a loss to the company now the gas price may be fixed over sale period but normally it is a function of oil price with floor minimum price to protect seller and ceiling price to protect buyer so this is how this gas this just about this gas sale agreement which is being done for investing in a gas producing facility for transporting in the form of lng cng or whatever mode of gas transportation we are following right so thank you very much uh, students for listening to it if you have any question and doubt you can reach me out through my mail id or through uh, any other social media apps thank you very much